the guy behind the goggles is me, Chris Young, and that's my friend Bill Benko from ATMakers.org. Bill has created a device that allows me to fly a drone using my wheelchair joystick. Here's how our first flight went. Here Bill is setting up the controller, showing me how it all works. You can see through the camera on the drone, it appears on his iPhone. Bill's going to go start off by getting me in the air, and then he will push a button that switches control over to me. Okay. I'll try not to hit him. <laughs> Here Bill takes off and gains a little altitude and then in a moment he'll push a button and hand the controls over to me. Right about here I take over control. I try a little forwards, a little backwards, just getting a feel for it, turning around. Now we're going to switch to an onboard view to show you what the camera is seeing. There we are sitting in my driveway. Come forward a little. Turn around. There's. Bill's wife is Lori and my roommate Barb. Still just feeling out the controls. Now when you're looking through the iPhone, there's sort of a heads up display that looks like this. The little green keyboard in the lower left means that I'm controlling because my device emulates a Bluetooth keyboard. You can see the letters that I'm typing. D means go right. W means go left. Q means go left. Now we're tilting down. I can tilt the camera up and down. Have complete control over just about all the functions of the device. We're waving at the camera there. Wave, Barb. There we go. This is back to the camera view that's being recorded on the drone itself. It took a little while to get used to the up and down controls on the camera. Uh, Bill had them reversed from what I thought they should be. That would be a simple software patch. You can see we had a little landing pad sitting there in the yard, so I thought I would try my hand at landing. I got down to the ground pretty close and almost got over the landing pad, but when I got close to the ground, it wouldn't let me go any lower. I later found out that when you get to that bottom altitude that it will go, you have to hold it down for more than five seconds and then it will land, but I didn't know that at the time, so my landing was unsuccessful. It would just hover a couple of inches off the ground. After giving up on my landing attempt, I decided to fly up a little higher again, go out across my sidewalk, and try not to run into Bill's rental car here. Climbing up. Still getting used to the controls.
let's take it up and look around. We'll put the picture in picture again from Lori's iPhone video. You can see how far up the drone is going. You can just barely see it. A little speck in the sky. And we're up about treetop height right now. You can just start to see the downtown buildings right over the treetops there left of center. Tilt the camera down, give you a little perspective on how high up we were. Now I'm going to spin around and do a 360. At this point, I'm looking at the iPhone that Bill, Bill is holding up next to me. In later flights, we put the iPhone in a set of goggles, and I could see through the viewfinder a lot easier than I could on this first flight. Things are going by pretty fast. I can't really identify it at this point, but in a later flight, we'll point out some really interesting landmarks. There you get a little better view of the downtown buildings in the distance. At this point we got a warning message saying that the battery was low and the thing tried to land itself. It starts coming down rapidly, almost on top of Bill's rental car, so he took over control to run out and try to rescue it. He finally got it to land in the middle of the street. And that was the end of our first flight. A lot of fun, a big success, ready to move on to try other things, like the goggles. Now we're going to take you behind the scenes and show you a little bit about how this device works and some of the setup that we had to do to make that first flight possible. Here's a video that Bill recorded earlier that demonstrates how the Freedom Wing connects to his iPhone to control the drone. So, Alright, so let me just walk through this. So this is a power wheelchair joystick and this is going into the Freedom Wing that converts power wheelchair joysticks into input for a feather. That's a feather, just so you can see what's in here. So this is an NRF52840 feather and a few jacks that we use for other things. And that is connected as a keyboard to my phone. Okay? Which is being powered. Not at all. Okay. Here I'm trying on a set hey, of goggles. Bill's like, iPhone will go into that holder and allow me to view the heads up video more directly. That works well. That works with the glasses, huh? Mm -hmm. You might need a, you may, might need one of these because it's not expensive. Now we're outside. As you can tell it's very windy. I decide I need to put on a jacket. Bill's getting everything set up while I'm getting my coat put on. So, I did check. Now we're going to connect this, this my sling ring push buttons into the device. Or, um, slip it over my finger, and I push the buttons with my thumb. This, Meanwhile, Lori's getting used to the okay, gimbal this? mount that's okay, holding okay. her iPhone. All right. She so gave up on sure that later and just held the iPhone yeah. by hand. Bill's checking that I'm hitting the right modes. The little LED indicator tells me what mode I'm in. We need to find a place to put that box where I can see it. We put it inside this little cardboard box to shield the sunlight from it so that I could see the LED. Let's do a quick test. Now we're going to check to make sure it's sending the proper keystrokes to his phone. So if you do uh, up, it should go to W. Everything yes. works, right. and we're ready to fly. Now, yes. Yes. Okay. Here we are putting on the goggles, getting ready for my second flight. 
they were really pretty lightweight, very comfortable. Right. They fit over my glasses nicely. Now we'll insert the iPhone into the goggles. <laughs> the glasses there you go. <laughs> How's that? Uh, Out of focus? I'm seeing it's, it looks like I'm seeing a double or something. Yeah, it's something perfect. Yeah, that's better. That better? Yeah. Uh Lori, would you set this on the very far? Would you set this on there? Reset the RV position. It says head tracking camera. Show. Head tracking camera. Is, is it a like a quiet neighborhood. Bill takes off and I'm getting a good view through the goggles. Flying with goggles like this is called FPV or first person video. It gives you the sensation that you're actually riding on the drone. The FPV mode splits the video into left and right eyes so that you can focus on it in the goggles. Unfortunately, when in FPV mode, my mode won't work. Bill's trying to transfer control to me and it won't transfer. So at this point, Bill opens up the goggles and changes the screen back to normal mode. It would be like holding your iPhone two inches from your eyes. It's really hard to focus, so I would have to open one eye and close the other one. With the goggles on, I couldn't see that car coming down the street. Fortunately, I was high enough that it didn't matter. Here I'm just playing around with the controls a little bit. And in a minute, I'm going to take it up way up to see how high it can go. When I went high in the first try, I really couldn't tell what was going on looking at the iPhone far away. So I'm hoping that I can get a better view of some landmarks looking through the goggles, even if it is only with one eye. Okay, here we go, straight up. In a moment, you're going to hear a big gust of wind come along and it starts blowing me sideways at a high rate of speed. Wow. Lori is having a hard time following me with her iPhone camera up that way. I can't see it. I can't see it. Can't see it. I don't see it. At this point, Bill takes over controls and tries to bring it back closer to home. He was really worried we were going to lose the drone. That, that storm blew in like right as you took it up. Yeah. And that wind just totally... Oh, it. I see it now. 
<laughs> so it can't fight that way. Uh, there it's coming. <laughs> you might be getting nauseous in there. Yeah. We're getting the cup of you. He's coming to fly the drone. Alright, let's get this back to where you can see you. Holy cow, I'm glad I got it back. I let it go. Alright, you see where you are? Here. Now we're back in safe territory, right over my house. And we're going to try it again, but not as high this time. controlling it, yeah. it stays blocked on GPS. When you're controlling it, yeah. the wind can take it. So if you go too hot, I gotta get them to fix that. Okay. Um, Alright, so let me, I can get it back to you to do a rotation, okay? Okay. Here is. Wind, wind. Wait a minute. What mode am I in? You're in uh, red. Okay, I'm back in control at a reasonably high altitude. I'm going to do some sightseeing. Here's a pretty good view of downtown. It's a little bit jerky to rotate. It rotates faster than I wish it would. Here's a still frame that identifies some landmarks. You can see the tallest building in downtown is South Forge Tower. The JW Marriott is very distinctive. You can see Lucas Oil Stadium just to the right of downtown. And then the grandstands for turn three and four of the Speedway as well as the Speedway Pagoda. The white building off to the right is the Coca-Cola bottling plant. There you can see it better. As we pan around further, we can look out across the field where they park for the 500. In the distance, you can get a glimpse of Eagle Hill Baptist Church right there. Again, it moves a little jerkier than I wish it would. And then here's a still frame showing Northwest High School. You can see the football stadium, the natatorium, and the main school building. The Stratford Apartments, formerly known as Watergate Apartments. Off to the north, they're just right of the screen. You get a glimpse of the uh, Pipe Plaza Shopping Center with the Myers store over in that area. Now I decide to start bringing it down a little bit. Here we are looking behind my house towards Winton, and there's a house over there that has Christmas decorations on the roof. That red spot is a sled and there's some reindeer in front of it. And here it is, early March. Here I'm looking down uh, into my neighbor's yard, and as we spin around, there you can see us on the ground. The drone actually captures GPS data of everywhere that it flew, and you can upload it to a website that overlays it on a Google Maps image. Here's the path that we took on the flight that we just showed you. It shows us taking off in the middle of the driveway, which isn't exactly right. We actually took off about 15 feet to the north uh, into my front yard there, but everything else is pretty accurate. If you look in the upper left corner, right where that third car is in my driveway, you can see a little blue arrow, and that's the position of the drone. Now I'm going to try to sync up the video from the drone with this animation of the flight path playback. Unfortunately, the playback doesn't run at exactly real-time rate, so I'm going to have to chop it up and resynchronize it every so often. But there you can see the arrow turning and moving forward. 
and now it's turning again. A little blue arrow right at the end of my driveway. And then it turns around. And then I'm going to climb up again in just a moment. We're going to skip a section here. Okay, we've jumped ahead about 25 seconds, and we're going to show you what happened when that gust of wind blew me off course. Watch how fast the arrow starts moving towards the south. We have to zoom out the map to keep it in frame. Now, it doesn't look like in the video in the corner that we're really moving that fast because we're up so high in the air. But according to the ground track, we're really moving. And that's what I can see uh, why Bill was so panicked that we were going to lose the thing. Now it ends up we only went down to the end of the street. But if it had kept going at that rate and he hadn't pulled it back, it would have been really far away. Now here he is bringing it back home trying to back it up against all of the wind. The log shows that right about in here, as he's bringing it down and back, it was the fastest that it was going, about eight miles an hour. And now we come back home. All of that other zigzaggy flight path all over my backyard and into the neighbor's backyard, I was just up in the air, turning around in circles and the wind was blowing me all over the place. I wasn't trying to fly that horrible zigzag pattern. So we really need to find a way to get the GPS stabilization turned on when we're using the Freedom Wing and the wheelchair joystick. Because it's going to be hard to fly uh, if we don't fix that problem. I think we're going to wrap it up for this video. There were two more flights, but we're probably going to put those in a separate video. Those other flights were during our attempts to do the live broadcast on Facebook. So that's all for now. Look for the new video in a few days.